Now sit down, please. Are you back from your breakfast? Yes. I've been waiting for you to come back. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to share with you about the master keys to accomplishing 10,000 um, attendance in our churches. 10,000 more souls. Amen. And the master key is soul winning. Soul winning. All right? Soul winning. Now, everybody in this church is going to be involved in soul winning one soul at a time. So if you are here and you have not learned how to win souls, you got a problem. You got a problem. You got a serious problem. Soul winning is one of the most important activities. And people do not win souls because they are not conscious of the realities of the importance of soul winning. It's more important to know how to win a soul than to have a degree at the university. Your degree at the university will not even cross states sometimes. From one state to another, it loses its value. And you've got to start all over again. If you are called to the bar in New York, you'll find out that it doesn't work in Los Angeles. You have to do the bar exams there. Isn't it not amazing? I mean, you take a flight within one country or a drive and it's lost its power. Huh? You can't cross with that certificate. You don't have a job. So when you get to heaven, you're going to find out that the fact that you didn't win souls has really gone against you. Really, really, really bad, bad. Bad, bad. Hey! Are you there? Or you are leaving now? You just came back, isn't it? Or are you going to the toilet? You're going to wee wee? You are here? Okay. So now, your ministry begins. Your ministry begins. The real ministry of every believer begins now. And this ministry, if you do not do it, you've made a big mistake. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17 is the one you know. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18 is the verse, the next best verse in this chapter. And all things are forgotten. Now, all of you who are involved in the church, make sure you promote the books because you see this is Paul he wrote Paul is not Jesus Christ Paul is not the savior of the world Paul was not God Paul was a very bad person who got saved and Jesus has used his writing his books for years so one of the ways you can be very fruitful in the ministry and the church is to promote the books it's not about selling 
It doesn't make money. But the word, the message goes out. So like we are about to read Paul's book again. His books are read all the time. It's Paul who wrote, Altman, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. And now he's writing, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We have a ministry. The original ministry of a believer is the ministry of reconciliation. You don't need a vision. You don't need to see Jesus appearing to you to know that you have a ministry. The ministry you have is the ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile people to God. Reconcile means to make peace. Let people come back to a state of having peace with God. The ministry of reconciliation. That is the work and the ministry of every one of us. And this is what causes panic in the republic of darkness. Because they are so frightened that they are going to lose citizens. And that members of their nation are going to go out. Now, God is not at peace with a world that has forgotten him. Where is God? Where, where is God? Huh? Do you know how do you people know anything about how big God is? Where is God? You know, I'm surprised that human beings would develop their thoughts to the point of saying that there is no God. Do you see? Like, how did we get here? How did we become who we are? One of my greatest surprises was when I saw a photograph of the sun that had been taken from as far back as Pluto. And we see the sun, and the sun was a star, one of the stars. Huh? Just one of many stars. When you look at it from Earth, you know, we are quite near the sun. We have the sun, then we have uh, Mercury, Venus, then us. So the brightest thing tonight, if this, if this um, sky, sky is clear, we may see some of the stars. But Venus, brightest of all of them. And you can see the planets from here. The bright objects in the sky are planets for us because they are nearby. Nearby means that a flight which goes at the speed of 55,000 kilometers per hour would get there in two years. That's nearby. These are neighbors. These are next door neighbors. What a neighbor. And between the planet, the, the, our sun, our great sun, right, and us, if we were to move a little closer to the sun, we would just burn. If we move back a little nearer, we would freeze. This is amazing. And on all the planets, they found no water and nobody. At first, they thought that all the planets were solid, but they found out that the first three up to Mars are made of solid things you can stand on. And then after that, it's made of gas. You can't stand on it. And it's a huge ball turning around very fast with fires and explosions. 
and it's turned around in the solar system, and, and we've never seen it before till 1977, 79, when we saw for the first time close filming of Jupiter. And God doesn't care. I mean, human beings have been on Earth for thousands of years, and I've never seen Jupiter, and I've never seen Saturn and the rings of Saturn close up. It's so magnificent. If I show it to you, you, you. the first time I, was, I watched it, I'd never seen it before. First time I watched it, my reaction was exactly identical to my wife's reaction when she came into the room and I was watching it. First I said, ha! Ah, why don't people fear God? And when she came into the room, she said, hey! I said, look, this is Jupiter, this is Saturn. Film in outer space. I mean, you can't believe it. You dumb beloved. Amazing, 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 amazing. Huh? Yeah. And uh, it's just amazing. God doesn't mind that we don't know. He doesn't give us telescopes and he doesn't even care that we don't know. And on each of these planets, there's nothing. And now they found the moons. The moons of Jupiter, some are bigger than the Earth. The moon, there are 58 of them going around Jupiter. And Saturn has about 38. Some of them are bigger. We have only one moon. And our moon looks so big because our moon is so close to the Earth. It's so close to us that it blocks the sun. And it, you, you would think that it's so big, but it's actually very small, but it is so close. And you wouldn't want to live on the moon. The moon is just a flight, three, three days flight at the speed of whatever. You wouldn't want to live on the moon because when it's hot, when the sun is facing, it is 180 degrees. I mean, that's not very comfortable. 100 degrees, remember, it's boiling hot water. <laughs> and 180. And then it goes minus. Mars. On the other side. That's the moon. And Mars is even more uncomfortable. It's cold. So where is God? They found uh, one of the planets, one of the moons of Saturn. And they found lakes on it. I forget the exact name of that, that particular planet. Methane. And the lakes are made of methane. Not H2O, but methane. Yeah. yeah. Not H2O. Methane. Or what's the formula for methane? CH4. CH4, yeah. Lakes, lakes. Like lakes and land. Land and lakes. Lakes. They found it. God has many things. He's not bothering to even show, his, show how powerful he is. Do you get it? But he's very great. And then we come up, human beings come up with, God is nothing, and there's no God. It just came with a big bang. Everything is whatever, and so on. Huh? Yeah. So God is not happy with human beings. God is angry with human beings. We've insulted him, and devils have invaded us. Demons have come since Lucifer came down and spoke to Adam. He's talking to him and have been invading human beings. So human beings have become more and more like demons. Yes, there's more evil and more wickedness. Because human, de devils are invading human beings, their minds and their bodies in every way possible. Every way possible. So every orifice and every hole in the human body is used as an entry point for evil spirits who are trying to enter us. Are you with me? Yes. Are you there? Yes. And so people become more demonized and more like the devil, rebellious, speaking very proudly about God. Oh, it's no God. There's nothing. Who is God? This what we can do whatever we want, but we can't do whatever we want. 
The fact that God gives you his liberty doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. We are actually like little ants. We are nothing. We have no... Even when you take a flight and you go up into the air, you see how insignificant we are. Is it not true? So, human beings have chosen what God made in nature to reject it and say, ah, it's not. Nature teaches us a lot about God. All right? So what is natural has been set aside and exchanged with unnatural things. That's why nature alone teaches you the complexity of God and of a great designer. Now, in large parts of the world, they made monkeys, snakes, and other images of wood and stone and said, this is God. If I took a cockroach and I said, this is your president, will it be a good thing? It's disrespectful. How do I put a picture of a cockroach and say, this is the president? Or a monkey? And say, that is a president. So when you say God, and you put a monkey, or a snake, or an animal, or a crab, and you say, this is our God. He made us. God is looking at all these insults and watching us insult him all the time. And then when God has made something like this, we take it and change it and use this for that and that for this. You've got a whole for these things to pass. Let's say this is for elephants, this is for antelopes. And you change and use it for different things in the human body. And everything, insulting, it's no God, there's nothing. There's the age of reason. Let's think to ourselves. We don't, we don't have to go to church. We don't need a God. So God is watching. Now, if you finish exploring the solar system, which you didn't even know about, <laughs> the next thing is to start looking at the stars. What do we find in the stars? Stars. Apart from the sun, which is our nearest star, that's eight, eight minutes away, eight light minutes away. Then the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, 80,000 years it will take for us to fly at 55,000 miles per hour. By the way, a fast plane goes around the earth in one day, flying at about 1,000 kilometers per hour. It can start British Airways or Delta can go from New York, JFK, and can go around the world and come back in about 24 hours. You can do the full flight, isn't it? 12 hours to Cape Town and another 12 hours come back. But about 24 hours. That's 1,000. Now, do you know how big the biggest star is? Do you know how long it will take an aircraft to cross a star? Uh, <laughs> it's going to it's going to take about 1800 years to fly at it with a plane to cross one of the stars yes to cross the surface of the star that's how big they are they are giant i watched a documentary once where they arranged the stars and so on, and the, the, the earth was like a button down there, and then the sun was like a little marble like this, and then the stars became like big hot air balloons, and they arranged it, they arranged all to see the sizes. So the earth is like a little button there, and then it keeps changing like uh, to a basketball, and then to a bigger ball, and then hot air balloon, and massive hot air, which couldn't fit into the building outside. Huge! So the stars. And we were the button on the floor that you can't see there. The whole earth that we fly around. So the God we are serving, uh-huh, you see them there? The God we are serving is so great. And the earth is full of 
proud human beings who have forgotten their God. The Bible says, all they that forget God shall be turned into hell. And pastors don't even want to mention hell anymore. All right? Now, no matter, I don't know what technology human beings are going to come up with, no human being is ever probably going to get to any star. We will never know what all these things are. But some of these stars probably are even angels. Because the Bible tells us that the stars, because it's so far, you can't really tell what it is. But it's there and it's twinkling. You know? And it's so, so far that um, they're never going to be able to know what is a star. So a star reveals the greatness of God. God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. And here we walk proudly. There's, no, there's nothing like God. There's whatever. Look at your heart pumping. Look at your brain working. Look at the things in the body, the vessels, the tubes. You've got alimentary canal for feces and food. Food and feces channel. Another set of tubes for blood. Another set for air. Another set for hearing, urine. Another set of tubes for urine. Another set for sexual tubes. Every tube, sets of tubes which don't meet. I mean, it's just like you think it's some magic. Something very magical happening. Huh? It's amazing. So God has sent us into the world with the ministry of bringing people who are not flowing with God and are really beastly about God, are really negative and really proud and bringing them to God and making us make peace with them and with God. This is our work. What do you think? Huh? He has given us 2 Corinthians 5, 18, the ministry of real, real work that God has given to us to do. We don't do it all. And anybody who does it is seen as, hey, this guy is very zealous. So this guy is like too serious. Like he's taking the Christianity to World Cup. And we don't know why he's taking it to World Cup. He's taking things too far. A small church you've joined, you have taken things too far now. One church you come to now, it's like you are becoming, I mean, we don't understand how far you want to take this thing to. Are you a priest? What are you? And people will say, Brother Dark, take your time. How should I take my time? About what should I take my time? When I've been given a ministry of reconciliation. I can't take my time. You know, one of the things that I admire about white people is that whatever they do, they take it to World Cup. Like they wouldn't play just a low, normal area league. Like it's World Cup. If it's pornography, it's World Cup levels of pornography. I mean like high level. <laughs> it's true. If it is, if it is, Buildings, they'll build. If it's Christianity, they will die for it. They spread the gospel to the whole world. They spread it. William Carey was a British man. He wrote that, he wrote that song. He yeah, already at 20. I wrote it, but I used his words. Do you understand? Like he, he wasn't writing a song. He was writing a book. But he wrote that. He wrote it. Those are his exact words. Adoniram Jackson was an American. He was inspired by William Carey. He came to India and met William Carey. William Carey suggested to him go to Burma. And he went. He was the first American. And after these guys, they inspired so many other people. 
to go to the ends of the world. Yeah. And they are still inspiring us. Because you speak by your life, eh? apart from what you say. Your life speaks. So, I, I like that about them. And we must learn that to take this thing to World Cup. We are taking Christ to World Cup and Universe Cup. Universe Cup. If there's anybody on another planet playing, we are ready. Do you know you'll be amazed to go and find there's another planet somewhere with a lot of people. Now these days, I think that it can easily be the case. Yeah. Like an, another side somewhere, there's people there all together who really worship God. And I mean, no devil has even gone there before to spoil the place, to scatter the place and change the people. Hey! You know? So, I want us to take our ministry of reconciliation very seriously because you have been commissioned. Yeah. It's, not, it's not anything special. I want you to do it because that's what we have to do. And when we start being in our ministry and obeying, the blessings start to flow. You stop praying for things. You stop praying for things. Because other, other than that, all you have to do is to live this life with the curse of Adam, curse of Eve, curse of Noah, curse of Moses. I mean, just curses everywhere. Everything you do is just curse. There's no blessing, any, no sign of anything good anywhere. By the time you finish thinking you have accomplished everything, the doctor will call and say, come. We did, we did a test, and the test is showing this and this and that and that. So, these are the number of days left. For you to not even be able to enjoy what you thought you were enjoying. Hey. Many people are planning for their retirement. Hey. Of which there may be no retirement. Hey. That's why you should remind me in case I can tell you the four laws of happiness. Hey. No, I'm not talking about happiness now. I'm talking about the ministry of reconciliation. How can I deviate into the laws of happiness? If I deviate into the laws of happiness, I'll forget about the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. So why do you want me to deviate from the ministry of reconciliation into the laws of happiness? If you follow the ministry of reconciliation, you'll be activating the laws of happiness anyway. Now, if God has called you to this ministry and you are not going, are you surprised when you are swallowed by the next whale? The next will that comes by. Go and ask, what is his name? Jonah. <laughs> God gave him a ministry of reconciliation. Go and reconcile Nineveh. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. God said, go and call, go to Nineveh and preach this preaching that I bid thee. Go and preach. Yes. Same. Go on, brother. Faster on the screens. Join me and help me to preach, okay? Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. You see, this not go and say, prophesy blessings. Prophesy, cry against the behavior. Few people are preaching against things that they should be, preach against. True or not true? true? And verse 3, I have to follow my own thing. And Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So when you go away from your ministry of reconciling Nineveh, you are going away from the presence of the Lord. Bad, bad. bad, bad. 
as soon as you go away from your ministry of reconciliation, reconciling an entire city dependent on one man. An entire city dependent on one man. But as soon as he turned away, he turned away from the presence of the Lord. Now look at Genesis 39, and we'll come right back to this. Genesis 39 from verse 1. Genesis 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer and a captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him. Have you been bought before by anybody? Are you not the one buying things? But here is somebody who was bought of him, of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Now look at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. You see, when the divine presence is with you, huh? What happens? He was a prosperous man. Whether bought or not bought, he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the magic, the Egyptian. So when God is with you, you are a prosperous person. So many times we are not prospering because we have gone away from the presence because the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. Verse 2, please. Verse 2. All right. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. So when Jonah ran away from the presence, from being with the Lord, you can only expect disaster. And what was he running away from? He was running away from the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. The Lord was where? With him. With him. With him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You see, the Lord being with you is the master key to prosperity in this accursed place of curses. And I can see why there are so many curses here in this world. So many rebellious people, disobedient people, proud people, I mean, the haters of God, haters of the word of God, haters of scripture, compromising everything. I can see why there's so much curse here. And we are in the curse. We are, we are right in the middle of it. But the master saw that the Lord was with him. So, when God gives you the ministry, and like he's giving all of us, we are going out of this place to go and reconcile people to God. That's our work. That's your work. It's not a pastor's work. Everybody's going to reconcile one by one. What is 10,000 in a country with 250 million people? 300 million people. What is 15,000? What is, what is even uh, 300 million? 30,000 would have even been a, a good percentage. Yes. 300 million. But anyway, 10, 15,000 will be 0.5% or 0.05% or something. Or 0.005. 0.005. It's nothing. So when you run away from your small job, what do you have? Nothing. So when you go back to Jonah, he rose up to flee and found a ship. He paid thereof 
the fear thereof. He went down into it to go with them to Shashish from the presence of the Lord. You see, the word of God is trying to keep emphasizing to us that you are going away from God. You are going away from God. You are going away from the presence of God. Where are you going away from the presence of God? You are not going to Tashish. You are going away from the presence of God. Huh? What do you think? You are not going to any Tashish. You are going away from... So you may be going to America and America may be away from the presence of the Lord. No wonder. The next verse is telling us what is about to happen? Now the Lord sent a great wind. You see, that's the frustration. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. These are wooden ships. It was about to divide into pieces. Now those of you who have never been fishermen before. I tell you. Some years ago. My children and I, we went to the beach. And uh, there were these, is it jet ski? Like a motorcycle, but for the water. Motorcycle for the water. <laughs> so, they wanted to go. I said, come. One at a time. But I think... When you stand on the land and you look at the sea, it looks flat. But it's not flat. (laughs) And it looks calm, but it's not calm. When we went out there, at a point, I felt I can still feel inside here. Because the sea was black. And like from here, or you are from where you are, it, it goes up, go up. You see it go up to the height of the ceiling like that. So you, you, you'll be here like this, so small, on the motorcycle, and then you see the wave is up there like that. And it comes down, down. And I, I turn the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> to go back. Yes. My, my sons, the two of them, they have never asked to go back to that place. <laughs> so, what Josh, uh, Jonah was experiencing was terrible. Something that can break a ship into pieces. You'll be terrified. And when you fall in the water, you are nothing. There are mountains of water up there down. Then it goes up like this. Even if you can swim. I mean, the, the sea is full of the dead. And Jonah was in it. Whatever is shaking your life today, in Jesus' name, it is calm by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God. (laughs) These are experienced seamen. They go to sea all the time, but this time they said, no, this one is different. Everybody called on his God. And cast forth the words that were in the ship into the sea to lighten the ship, but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay down and was fast asleep. So the ship master came and said to him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon your God. <laughs> Everybody is calling on his God. You are sleeping. During turbulence, you are sleeping. (laughs) 
If so be that God will think of us and we perish not. And they said everyone to his fellow, let us cast lots. You know, these are desperate people. This is why sometimes people go and see prophets in desperation. It's like anything. Let's cast. We are all in the ship. How do you control a storm? The storm is coming. It's about to kill all of us. Now let's choose one person to sacrifice. Maybe it is his fault. And when we sacrifice it, maybe the storm will end. So that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? What is thine occupation? And his occupation was the ministry of reconciliation. And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? Hey. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, I fear the Lord, which has made the sea and the dry land. And the men were sitting there afraid and said, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Eh? So you see, doing the will of God and doing the ministry of reconciliation brings the presence of the Lord. I want the presence of God. I want to be like Joseph. The Bible says, and Joseph prospered because the Lord was with him. And then the next verse says, Then they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? They wanted him to say, Please suggest that we throw you away. You, you suggest that we don't want to say, we feel bad. Now we are also sinners. And he said unto, Take me and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest. So I'm sure Jonah stood there as he looked at the black wave going up like this. Have you watched this film? There's a film. Um, it's a bad film because everybody dies in, in the film. Huh? Not Deep Blue Sea. It's about a, a ship going in the sea. No, not Poseidon Adventure, no. Huh? Titanic. No, 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 no. It's a fishing boat. Oh, bad, bad. Perfect storm. If you want to understand Jonah, watch the perfect storm. You'll not be happy because in the end, everybody dies. So I'm just, I'm warning you. Those who don't like films, huh? Everybody. The film is used as a bad film. I don't know why they make Bad, bad, bad film. Everybody dies in the film. Nobody's left. Yeah. So you can imagine Jonah waves going up like that. Then they called people and they held him. Now you see, we, would it have not been better to be a preacher standing at a crusade ground? God says to you this word of God. Rather than here where people are holding you one, two, about to throw you. I mean, think of the two pictures. Standing at a crusade and preaching or being a missionary or people holding you and about to throw you one, two, into the waves that have gone very high. How many agree that the ministry of reconciliation is far better and easier? Far easier. Far. I'm better off preaching the word of God than being thrown into the sea. Huh? Verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea was wrought and the tempest against them. Next verse. Wherefore they cried to the Lord, Lord, we beg you, we beg you, let us not perish because of this man's life. You see, they, they didn't want 
to bring another curse on themselves for throwing somebody into the water. Lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. Oh, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Whatever is too tempestuous in your life, as you enter the ministry of reconciliation, it is calmed down in the name of Jesus. Receive it 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 in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Your life is calming down. Your life is calming down. Your life is calming down. Your finances are calming down. Your life is calming down. In Jesus' name. By the ministry of reconciliation. By the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. Then the man feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice. So even his life was still, because the ministry, the call is part of you. So even his apparent death in the water was helping people to be saved. Because that's what he was called. That's his calling, his life call. You can't run away from your call. There's a song like that, you know, you can't get away from your original calling. Isn't it true? Where is um, from your original calling, isn't it? Yeah. Which one is that? Song? Yeah. All right. You can't get away from your original calling. Huh? And the next verse. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Preparation had been made for the disobedient ones. Hey! Now if God has called you to an island, to Latino America, to another state, to Africa, to wherever, don't say no. Look, Look at the church today. Who would have thought that a country that has exported Christian morals and Christianity all over the world is today exporting homosexuality all over the world? Huh? Who would have thought that? That a country which have the best churches, people learn from the church today, Yes, sending missionaries to die for Christ in the name of Jesus. Today, the pastors are officiating weddings and will soon probably be officiating weddings between animals. The dog will say, do you take this woman as your husband? The dog will say, whoa, 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 whoa. And any pastor who speaks about it is called hate speech. Can you believe your eyes or your ears? I don't believe it. You see, when you, when you, and and many times, you see that the church, instead of following the ministry of reconciliation, so winning, rather following the ministry of prosperity, getting money, having happy life, always talking about Good life, good children, good marriage, good happiness, self. Uh, that is not, you see, that is not what ministry we've been given to have. Oh. You see, focusing on the wrong thing. Look, when you listen to the Makane, whatever marriage counseling you need, you see that you have been counseled by the time you are, you are finished. Not that. It's about marriage counts, but rather serving God brings revelation and healing on different things that are, it's not even what you are trying to get. It's not what you are trying to get, but it helps. Once you are idle, 
So many things creep in. You, don't, you can't even recognize yourself later. Because of idleness. Idleness is the cradle for nonsense and evil. Idleness. It's the cradle for all kinds of evil. Huh? The Lord prepared a great fish to swallow. So, a lot of crisis. And I tell you, in the church today, you know, a lot of churches are changing into something. You can't change into a university. It's changing into a motivational school, social something, a center, whatever, you know. Talk shows. You, you can't even recognize what we are doing. The real ministry of reconciliation that you see an evangelist, you look like Bonke looks like a strange, like he's like some angry man who is more with souls and you have to win souls. And how can I mean, how is it that an evangelist is an odd person in the church? An evangelist is like an ambassador. It's like how you have an ambassador for a nation. An evangelist is the ambassador of the church. And there are no more ambassadors. No more ambassadors. No wonder the whale swallowed the church. Christianity is not about fighting certain things. Christianity is about the ministry of reconciling. Whether you fight certain things or not, they will do it. Yes. So I don't see what you are wasting your time about. And he was in the whale for three days and three nights. Next verse, yeah. And Jonah prayed. Jonah did what? Prayed. prayed. And next verse. And he cried. Oh God. Oh God, I promise, I promise, I promise. You know, Lord, what I told you, I told you I will do, Lord, I will do. I'll go to the ends of the world. Remember, Lord, I was singing that song the other day. I'll go to the ends of the world. Please, Lord, give me another chance. I'll go to the ends of the world. I'll serve you, Jesus. Remember when I was in Scripture Union, Lord, I told you. I will serve you, Lord. I told you that if you help me to come to America, Lord, I will, I will do everything, Lord. You remember what I told you, Lord, when I was a young boy. I promised, Lord, I want to go back to that. To that. Please take me back. Lord, you remember during that worship time I was singing to the ends of the world. You remember that song I was singing to the ends Jesus, of the world? Jesus, I believe in you and I will go to the ends of the earth to the ends of the earth for you for you alone are the son of God and all the world will see you are God you are God. Oh Lord, you remember. Jesus, I believe in you and I will go to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. Lord, I'm praying about For it again. You, I promise. Lord, the son of God. Yes, Lord, but when I got married, All the world will see. I had to think about my you family. I had to think about my children. You are Lord, we have two children now. I, can't, I couldn't go, but Lord, Jesus, I want to go now. My wife is pregnant again. I will go Lord, it's a third child. To the end it's more difficult the now, but Lord, I want to obey you. I want to do your will, I Jesus. A good job. You are a really, really good job. Oh, it was too good to Jesus, leave, Jesus. I in you. But Lord, I remember. I but Lord, what do I have now? With all this good earth. job, where has it brought me, Lord? To the end of the Lord, I still want to obey you. you. I want to do your will. I want to go where God you said I should go.
you didn't go? You didn't go to the ends of the world when he called you. You didn't go when he told you go. You didn't go. And you're wondering why there is so much trouble, difficulty. Huh? Curse. What is curse? It's like it should have been this, but it's turned upside down. Up, up, down. Everything is the other way around. I want to do his will. You know, when I was in Liberia four years ago, some of you were with me in Liberia. When I left the prison in Buchanan, I don't know if I promised the people. Did I promise them? I don't think so, because I don't usually make promises like that. But I promised myself I will do something about this prison. It's four years, but it always comes to my mind. Remember the prison. Remember you said you would do something. I got thousands of dollars, and I sent somebody to Liberia. Go and repair, change this whole prison. Yes. You see, you make a promise to God. You said, I'll go. You, you must go. You said, I'll do. You must do. So I'm speaking to the young people. I'm speaking to the old people. What you said to God, you will do. You do. Cry. You can't cry. And crying, crying, crying doesn't mean much unless it's accompanied with change. And then Jonah chapter 3, after all the crying of chapter 2, Jonah chapter 3, God was calmly listening to his cries, and then God said, okay. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, okay, you can now stay here. Read it. Arise and go to Nineveh. Huh? The mission is still on. That great city. Huh? And preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee like. The, even the preaching hasn't changed. No change of message. And I'm standing here in America. If you like, take the camp meetings that we've had here. I'm preaching the preaching that has beat, been beat me. I've been preaching it and I'm preaching it. That's why some of you think you know what I'm going to preach about. But you don't. You really don't. Never make a promise to God. You know, that's why I mean, I, I rarely promise things. And I was with, once with a man of God. He, he came and said, oh, I'm going to send you a watch. <laughs> Never send a watch up till today. <laughs> then he saw my son. He said, I'll, I'll send you one of these watches too. <laughs> Never sent it. <laughs> Learn not to make promises. Unless you are sure that you are going to make it. And when you make it, that's it. If you say, I will do. When I promised my beloved that I will marry her on the 26th of August, 1985. Huh? Yes. Bring your notes, those of you who are A1. You, you who are A1. Are you you're looking at me with seven eyes? You... Bring your notes. Exactly four years later, I married her. I said, I promise you I'll marry you. I'll marry you. If I say I'll marry you, I'll marry you. Why not? So don't make promises. Oh, Lord, I promise you. Oh, Jesus. I was, look, do. Shoot. Don't talk. I'm talking too much. Too much talking. Too much talking, no action. We don't need a lot of uh, perfusive speakings. Huh? So this Ministry of Reconciliation, no matter whose church is the biggest church and who has more million dollars and who is more on television than anybody, the ministry and the preaching is the same. Jesus died on the cross. And I've got a new book called How to Preach Salvation. Yeah. How to Preach Salvation. So that's one. It's bigger than, this one is big. 
This one is big, but that one is bigger than this. It's as all the salvation messages. You, every person, yes, you preach salvation. Hundred messages. Yes. All my crusade messages in that is in that book. All my crusade messages in the book. Twelve years of preaching at crusades. How to preach salvation. Yes. There is no better topic. Somebody asked me, what's your favorite topic? My favorite topic is salvation. Like when I have the chance to preach about salvation, pure salvation is my best. My best, I like it. More than preaching loyalty, this, this, this. Well, loyalty, you know, they are fighting message. You are fighting with This one is salvation. Like Christ is saving us. So the Ministry of Reconciliation. Huh? You got to learn how to do the Ministry of Reconciliation. Sit down. of the world so how come you stayed in your hometown was my message not clear how come you stayed in one city and one place in the place that you thought was best for you you didn't go as far as I told you to go, but you stayed where you thought you prosper, oh child. Oh, oh, oh child. You should have gone to the end of the world. There are so many harvest fields. Everyone thinks someone else will go. These places are left to drown in sin. While other religions just take over. And the light of the gospel is dim over there. So many will go to hell. How come you stayed in one city, in one place, in the place that you thought was best for you? You didn't go as far as I told you to go. You stayed where you thought you'd prosper, oh child, oh, oh, oh child. You should have gone to the ends of the world It's time now to go to the ends of the world We must rise up and we must go How many more years do we have? Are we going to stay in our comfort zone? Where have our fears led us? They have only kept us from the blessings of God. How come you stayed in one city, in one place, in the place that you thought was best for you? You didn't go as far as I told you to go. But you stayed where you thought you prosper, oh child, 
oh, 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 child You should have gone to the ends of the world You were afraid of me, your Lord you didn't trust me when I said go. You didn't think I'll take care of you. I'm giving you another chance. It's not too late to go to the ends of the world. Go to the ends of the world. How come you stayed in one city, in one place, in the place that you thought was best for you? You didn't go as far as I told you to go, but you stayed where you thought you'd prosper, oh child, oh, oh, oh child. You should have gone to the ends of the world Uproot yourself from your comfort zone Start obeying what I'm saying Obey what I'm saying Go to the ends of the world Go to the ends of the world Go to the ends of the world How come you stayed in one city, in one place In the place that you thought was best for you You didn't go as far as I told you to go but you stayed where you thought you'd prosper, oh child, oh, 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 oh child. You should have gone to the ends of the world, oh child, oh, 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 oh child. How come you stayed? Somebody, they, they were singing the song to you, and you were you were not understanding. You were not I mean, admitting. How come you stayed in one city, in one place? Huh? You didn't go as far as I told you to go. One soul is worth the whole of New York City, Chicago, Florida, everywhere. It says, what shall a man, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So the whole world is not worth his soul. And therefore, if it's not worth his soul, it's not worth a soul. A soul is a very important thing to God. One soul. When I see people have gone on mission, you ask them, how many people do you have? You say, 10 people. It's like 10 worlds. 